I grew up in a Satmar community in Williamsburg. Um, I have nine siblings, um, countless of cousins and uh, nieces and nephews. Uh, modesty was really, really stressed, especially in school. And um, I was always going to be the balbost. I was going to be the housewife with a lot of children. But I was, uh, I was skeptical when I was younger even. I wasn't sure that was exactly what I wanted to do. We were all raised up on very strict rules and I was told just to sit all in. Basically my whole day, my whole life was studying. My goal was getting to be a roof, a rabbi, getting to be a teacher in a yeshiva. I grew up in the Satmar Hasidic community of Kiris Joel. Kiris Joel is a village in upstate New York where only Hasidim live, secluded, with their own government and social reality. In Kiris Joel, people dress modestly in 18th century Europe East European clothing. They speak primarily only Yiddish. And every aspect of daily life is governed by minute religious and social laws. As a young girl, I was expected to be very involved in the domestic responsibilities in the household chores because we all had very large families. I come from a family of more than 12 children and it was expected of the girls to help out at home. I was 18 or, and this is the time when you, you have to think about your future and your future is one thing, get married and that's it. There's not much options after that. And I just looked around then. I saw all my friends, all my siblings, all my Every person I know, I did not want to end up like them. I had this um, Im dream of, you know, having this career and um, going to um, traveling around the world. And I knew that that, that didn't feel, fit in with the lifestyle that um, the community and my family had in mind for me. But I felt sometimes, like after a day of learning, and I stand up and I was looking on other students, none of them had a problem of maybe I'm just talking to the wall. None of them had it, and I was saying, am I crazy? Is something wrong with me? Why do I have doubts on the basics? I mean, what's going on? I was, I was raised up that having such kind of doubt is the worst thing ever. I think the moment of transition, when I started to think of it as a real option, was when my son, my son started to grow up. And I realized I was imposing on him the limitations that I felt were too restrictive. I, I, I didn't feel comfortable depriving him of an education. I thought the fact that when he's going to be 18, I'm going to have to pick his wife. The fact that I'll have to hide from him the books I read or the computer, that he'll, be ha he'll have to be in yeshiva for so many hours without a secular education. That idea began to really, really trouble me. And I felt as a parent, it was my duty to raise my child with more opportunities and options. After I finished college, um, I was again, uh, I was just 20 years old and I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. At that point, most of my uh, classmates had gotten married or were at least engaged and I still was not ready to get married. Um, I had serious doubts at that point about religion. I wasn't like a lot of other people, our friends I have, did it. They had a bad upbringing. They had hate against anyone. I loved my family. I loved my wife. I loved my wife's family. I loved my community. I loved everything. I just wasn't able to continue living this lifestyle. Probably the most difficult moment was not only when I felt that I was at a very high risk of losing custody of my son, but also when I had been so isolated and bullied by rabbis and authorities that I began to internalize the message that I was not a fit parent because of my rebellion. I think there is nothing more painful to a mother who you know, changes diapers and sings her child to sleep at night than feeling like her presence in her child's life somehow hurts her child. My sister mentioned to me that uh, someone had told her about this organization called Footsteps for other people that are exploring the outside world. 
and um, I told her, I told her, well, I heard about it from an online friend, but again, I don't want to go to a party crowd. She said, I don't think it's that, but she went and um, she told me, Hindi, you, you have to come. I had a friend in Yeshiva who we both said that we were ready to leave, but we both knew that we don't have the guts. We we're not going to do it. So I kept telling him, I'm going to call today. And he would say, uh, I'll give you, uh, you know, a hundred dollars if you do. It was, it was just the, the, that feeling, I have to get back at him. I'm going to do it today. And I did it and I called. I came to the first drafting group, which was at the Y with those little tiny cheers. And I was, uh, I think like 11 or 13 of us. And um, oh, everyone was sitting together and I looked around and I'm like, wow, they look like normal people. So they told me, if you are in the United, why are you not joining Footsteps? I was like, why is Footsteps? And he told me it's an organization that can help you. I had to go through many years of slow and often terribly difficult and painful personal transitions. I began with nothing. I had no financial financials, I had no emotional or social support. I couldn't drive a car and wasn't allowed to drive a car. I had no self-confidence. I had to start with basic things like learning emotional independence because in a tight-knit community you used to turning to your very close relatives, your mother, your husband for support. I didn't know how to take care of myself. It was um, right after I enrolled in college. I moved on campus. I lived in with roommates and I did not know them. I did not know the people who are like them. It was my first time, you know, interacting with 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 with, with non Hasidic people, but now I'm living with them and I'm there all day long. <clears throat> and so I had I had no idea how to deal with the social aspect of college. In addition, I really struggled in class. I I remember taking chemistry class, the chemistry classes, and and I f really felt that I'm the dumbest person in that 50 student class. Everyone understood something, and I did not understand. I, the, I have to realize I'm sitting there, and I have never heard of the periodic table, and they are just they're discussing it, not telling me what a periodic table is. I was devastated after I got my first exam. I got a 60 and I could not take it. Um, so actually I called Footsteps and they, they hooked me up with a tutor and I would come in every weekend and <coughs> go over the classes. When I was going through a really, really rough time, I participated in certain Footsteps events that were socially so important because I'd been so isolated. And I also got to know people through the Footsteps Network who, one of them recommended me to a lawyer who was instrumental at the time that I was leaving. And once I left, Footsteps has made my education possible as a graduate student at Sarah Lawrence College by giving me really substantial scholarships. They helped me with my first job. They helped me find a place to live. There are people who are lucky enough, they have family, and their family supports them. They support them with all kinds of things. Footsteps um, took that uh, place for me, without uh, no exaggeration. Footsteps is my life. Footsteps saved me emotionally, physically, even financially. And probably the organization, the people that were pushing me the most to stay in the community, to stay with my wife, was Footsteps. They just try to do whatever is best for me. For me, to be a footstepper means to be part of a larger community that respects individuality and people's choices in life. It means to be able to have that support, to realize what you feel is right for you, and also to give back to others what you got. To be a footstepper means to understand that there are other 
kinds of people out there. There are different paths you can choose and um, that's what Footsteps is, is to explore the world outside and see where do you fit in this world and uh, also to understand that not everyone's going to choose everything exactly like you and hopefully they won't because if everyone chose the same thing, I think this world would be pretty, pretty boring.